Hello, my name is Mr. Ashbury and this is Angles in Polygons as part of my IGCSE exam questions series. If you find it useful, please like and subscribe. There's some easy questions at the start and some really tricky ones to check out at the end. Give them all a go and see how you get on. Here we go. Work out the size of the exterior angle of a regular polygon. So we know that the exterior angles are 360 divided by the number of sides. So in this case, we're just going to do 360 divided by 8. And that tells us that one of them is 45. And just double check that. Yeah, good to go. So 45 degrees is the exterior angle. Okay, next question, slightly trickier. You get told that there is an interior angle of size 162. So if I were to draw one corner of this shape, it would look like this. And then if I were to extend a line out, this would be the exterior angle. Now exterior angles are very useful because we can work out them out by doing 180 minus the interior. That's 18. And that means that well, exterior angles go all the way around the shape, like in a big circle. So they will always add to 360. So how many 18 degree angles do I need to fit into a full circle? Well, that would be 20. So that must be 20 exterior angles around the outside of the shape, which means there must be 20 sides on this polygon. Okay, now we move on to applying it to um, uh, nested shapes, so polygons inside of other polygons. And we've got a pentagon inside of an octagon, and it says the pentagon has exactly one line of symmetry. So that must be down here, and that tells us that this angle here, let's call it Y, is the same as this angle here. Okay, now what do we know about pentagons? Well, we can work out the total angles inside a pentagon by doing the n minus 2 times 180 formula. So in this case, 5 sides minus 2 times by 180 is 3 times by 180, which is 540. So that tells me there are 540 degrees in a pentagon. So if I can set up now a equation, I could write that 2y plus 112 times 2 plus 84 will equal 540. So let's solve this equation. Let's take my 540 and I'll take away 84 and I will take away 112 times 2. And that tells me that 2y is equal to 232. So dividing through by 2, that tells me that y is equal to 116. Okay, great. But we're looking for x. But I know that x and y make up a angle inside of the larger octagon. So let's work out the interior angle of an octagon. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I could use the same formula. I could do n minus 2 times by 180 to work out the total number of angles or the total interior angles. So that will be for an octagon 8 minus 2 times 180. So that's 6 times 180 which is 1080. And then I could take that 1080 and I could divide it by 8 because that's the number of angles there are inside of a octagon. And that will give me the total angle for one interior angle. So I now know that x plus y equals 135. So x is equal to 135 minus y, which we know is 116. So I do 135 minus 116, which is 19. Okay, next question, we have a pentagon and an octagon again, 
and we have an isosceles triangle here. Okay, well, we know that the interior angle of, a, um, of an octagon is 135. We worked it out in the last question. And we also know the interior angle of a pentagon. We can find that out by doing 5 minus 2 is 3 times by 180. And then divide that by 5. That tells me an interior angle is 108. Okay, great. So that means I can work out what this angle is here. That will be 360 minus 135 minus 108. That's 117. And then because we've got an isosceles triangle here, x will be 180 minus the angle at the top divided by 2. And I know that these two are the same lengths, and therefore these are the two same angles, because these octagon and this pentagon share a side, which means they have the same side lengths. Okay, so we go to our calculator, 180 minus 117, and then divide that by 2, gives me 31.5. Okay, next question says that we have two congruent isosceles triangles and two congruent polygons. That basically means that they are exactly the same. They have the same angles and the same sides. That is, the isosceles triangles have the same sides and angles, and the two polygons have the same sides and angles. Right, enough talking, let's get into it. This angle in here, we can work that out by doing 180 minus 66 minus 66, which is 48. Okay, great. So these angles here are the same because the two polygons are identical in either side. So I can do 360 minus 48, and I can divide that by 2. And that tells me that the interior angle of these polygons is 156. When I have an interior angle like that, I can work out the exterior angle by doing 180 minus. So that's 24. And all of the exterior angles go all the way around the shape and add to 360, so we can find out how many there are by doing 360 divided by 24, and this will give me the number of exteriors and also the number of sides, because for every exterior there may be one side. So the answer is 15. Okay, the last question is a real tricky one, and if you um, also would like to watch another tricky um, polygons question. I've got one which I made the other day right here. You can watch that as well. But let's do this tricky one which involves multiple different topics. Here we go. Okay, so we need to work out the shaded region um, of this octagon. Now, we've not got much to go on here. But what we do know is we know that the interior angle of an octagon is 135. We can do that by doing 8 minus 2 is 6, times that by 180, and then divide that by the number of sides, um, which is 135. You've got to trust me on that one. Okay. And if we put a center point in the middle right there, and if I were to draw lines like this to each of the corners, then they would split the interior angle in half. So 135 divided by 2 is 67 and a half. So that's 67.5, that angle in there, and as are all the other ones. But that's the one I'm really interested in. Because if I extend that line across like this, I get a right angle triangle. And with a right angle triangle, I can use Sokotoa. 
Now this side here is the opposite and this side here is the adjacent. So I'm going to use tan and I'm going to work out the opposite. So I'm going to do tan of the angle multiplied by the adjacent. So I'm going to do tan of 67.5 multiplied by 10 and that will give me tan of 67.5 close brackets times by 10 24.1 so that is this down here I can now draw another line across here to give me a rectangle and let's call this area in here A so the area of A will be just base times height so I can times this by 10 and that will give me 241.4 and now to look at the area here let's call that B well I know this is a right angle so this angle in here will be 135 minus 90, which is 45. So that angle is 45. I know this side length is 10 because it's part of the octagon and all the sides are the same because this is a regular octagon. And I know this length over here is 24.1 by symmetry. It must be at same as the base which we worked out earlier. So I can use the area of a triangle formula which is a half times a times b times sine of c. So as long as my angle is in between my two sides I can use this formula. So I do a half times by 24.1 times by 10 times by sine of 45. So I do a half times by 24.1 times by 10 times by sine of 45 and that gives me 85.2. So my final total area will be 241.4 plus 85.2. So I just add on 241. And I get 326, uh, 7 to the nearest centimeter cubed. Perfect, and we're done. Okay, that was a really tricky question, that one. Well done for sticking with it. That's angles and polygons done. Please do like, subscribe if you found that useful, and then move on to the next topic in the series. Bye for now.